Hello and welcome to Drunk on Tea. Today I'm going to show you how to paint these two Fenrisian wolves for your games of Warhammer 40,000. To start off with, I'm going to show you how to paint the Dark Wolf. As you can see, I've primed the model black. This will give us a nice even base coat for the rest of our colours to work from. And first of all, I'm going to come in with Rhinox Hide. And I'm going to paint all over the model. Make sure you work this into all of the recesses and all the bits of fur. Just make sure you cover all of the model with a couple of layers of rhinoxide. If after the first coat is still a little bit patchy, make sure you come back in with a second coat of rhinoxide. Just give a solid cover of rhinoxide all over the body and fur of the wolf. And after a couple of layers of Rhinox hide, you can see we've got a nice smooth, even coat all over the model. So now with some Gorthor Brown, I'm going to come in and add some of this over the belly fur and the skin to the model. So I'm just going to add a little patch here on the lower part of his belly. This doesn't need to be a neat line at all. This can be a little bit scratchy, a little bit rough. This is just to simulate lighter fur on the belly of the model and the lower parts of any fur here like on his legs and his shoulders. I'm also going to catch areas like here around his face. I'm going to work this in the direction of the fur wherever possible, leaving a little bit of that Rhinox hide showing in any of the recesses, picking out all of the raised fur details around his muzzle and then the areas of exposed skin with a little layer of Gorthor Brown. You find if you trace it from the front of his muzzle, working backwards and towards the lower parts of his face, nice smooth motions really gives that effect of fur. I'm also going to pick any raised areas on his legs with a scratchy fur pattern. Just going to catch these with a couple of strokes of Gorthor Brown as well. Leaving that Rhinox hide showing in all the recesses. Let's just add some interest to the otherwise flat areas of the model. And with that Gorthor Brown applied, you can see it looks a little bit scratchy, but it has given us some areas of lighter fur all over the model. And now with some Bane Blade Brown, I'm going to come in and apply this once again on the face, focus it onto the most raised areas where we just applied that Gorthor Brown. So once again, keeping your strokes in the direction of the fur, just on the most raised areas, putting a little bit of Bane Blade Brown just to lighten up some of those areas a little bit. Leave a little bit of the Gorthor Brown and the Rhinox High showing through in all the deeper areas. Just catch the highest parts with a little bit of Spain Blade Brown. And with that Bane Blade Brown applied, it's lightened up some of those areas of fur on the face and the skin. now with some Abaddon Black. I'm going to come in and apply a line going down the back of the model. 
So this is just the most raised part here running along your spine, just darkening this down with a layer of Abaddon Black. This will just add some interest to the fur, give it that two-tone appearance that's so common on wolves. And with that Abaddon Black applied, that is all of the fur on the model painted. So now I'm coming in with some Ushapati bone. And with this, I'm gonna lightly dry brush all over the model. So I catch all of the fur, all of the face, the legs, catch everything with a light dry brush of Ushabati bone. This will really help tie the colors of the model together and really help give us that realistic fur appearance. So just make sure you dry brush all over the model with some Ushabati bone. And with the dry brush applied, I'm going to come in next with some Agrax Earth Shade and shade all over the model. This will knock back the colour of the dry brush a little bit, but while still allowing it to show through, adding definition to all of the recesses and really tying all of those colours we applied to the fur together. So just make sure this doesn't pull too heavily in any of the recesses. Come in and shade all of the model with some Agrax Earth Shade. And once that Agrax uh, shade has dried, you can see it softened down those colours, but really added definition all over the model. So now with some Ushabati bone again, I'm going to come in and give a really light dry brush, focusing just on the fur this time. Just make sure you just catch the most raised areas of the fur with a light dry brush of Ushabati bone. This will once again pick out those raised areas, but without being too stark, and just really catch all of those strands of fur on the model. And now with that dry brush applied, the only thing left to do now is to paint the last few details on the model. To start off with, with some Bugman's Glow, I'm going to paint these little bits of gum you can see showing through next to his mouth. Be nice and careful around the skin and the fur. Just make sure you catch these gums with some Bugman's Glow. With those gums picked out, the next thing to do is to paint any teeth details. So for this I'm coming in with White Scar. I'm going to pick out any of the teeth you can see on the model. To be nice and neat here, I'll add all of the other details. Just make sure you pick out all of the teeth with a thin line of White Scar. We're also going to pick out any of the claws you can see on the model as well. So on any of his feet, pick out any claws with some white scar. And I'm also going to pick out the eyes to the model as well. Just sink a little bit of white scar into the recesses of the eye sockets. And with the teeth, claws and eyes picked out, 
there's really only a couple of steps left to apply to the model. So the first of these steps is I'm going to come in with some Abaddon Black. I'm just going to paint a small vertical line in the middle of the white sky in his eyes as this will act like a pupil. Nice and neat, just add a small vertical line in each of his eyes. With those eyes picked out, that's really brought the face together and added some interest to the focal point of the model. And now with some Agrax Earthshade, just going to shave his teeth, gums and claws. A little bit of Agrax Earthshade just to darken these down a bit. With that Agrax Earthshade applied, it's darkened down those stark white details. And finally, with some Screaming Skull, I'm gonna come in and paint a thin line on each of the teeth, just to act like a highlight. Keep these nice and small, and just focus them towards the tip and sharpest point of each of the teeth. Just catch them with a thin line of Screaming Skull. And I'm also going to catch the claws in the same way with a small spot of screaming skull. And with that screaming skull applied, that's how to paint dark fur on a wolf for your games of Warhammer 40,000. So next up, I'll show you how to paint a light wolf. If you're enjoying the video, please press like. If you want more videos, press the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. If you would like to support the channel and become a member, please press the join button down below. So to paint the light wolf, as you can see, I've primed the model white. So this will give us a nice light base coat for the rest of our colors to work from. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm coming in with some Ushabiti bone. And I'm gonna paint this all over the fur to the model. You don't need to be too neat at this step. Just make sure you catch all of the fur with a couple of layers of Ushabiti bone. Be nice and careful when you get around the skin. You don't want to get this over any of the flat areas of skin we have on the model. But just make sure you cover all of the fur texture with a couple of layers of Ushabiti bone. So by keeping the paint nice and thin, building up in a couple of layers, you build up to a nice solid color of Ushabiti bone without obscuring any of the detail. we get around the face, I'm going to focus onto those areas of fur, but leaving any flatter areas of skin with just the white primer showing. You can see here, I'm focusing on this part here on the top, round to his ears, but leaving the muzzle white. Now with that Ushabiti bone applied, we've picked out all of the fur on the model. So now with some Zandri dust, 
I'm going to come in and paint about the top three quarters of the model with Zandri dust. This will give us that banding effect to the markings coming up the model. This area doesn't need to be particularly neatly defined. Just pick out about the top third and paint it with Zandri dust. So it can be a little bit scratchy. Don't need to be even straight lines dividing the areas. This will help just give us that natural appearance of different colours of fur on the wolf. And on the face, I'm going to leave about a quarter of the face showing and just do this darker colour coming back. And with that Zandri dust applied, you can see we've darkened up those top three thirds of the fur, leaving the lighter fur at the bottom. So now with some Steel Legion Drab, I'm going to come in and do much the same, but this time just painting the top half or so of the wolf. Once again, it doesn't need to be a neat divider between the two colours, it can be quite scratchy. We just come in and paint the top half of the wolf with a layer of Steel Legion Drab. Well, you can mix up the colours and different areas, different patches, just to help create some different markings all across the wolves in your army. Once again on the face, I'm just going to focus this in in a smaller area, leaving some of the previous colours showing through. And with that Steel Legion Drab applied, there's just one more colour to apply to the fur to give us that marking effect. And that will be with some Rhinox Hide. I'm going to come in, just paint a band right along the very top of his fur, mostly on these raised areas here along his back. Just give us one final darker section right along the back of the model. Once again, this doesn't need to be the neatest of lines. Just catch a small line running all the way down the back of the model with some Rhinox hide. So I'm going to pick out the nose on his face with some Rhinox hide at this stage as well. Being nice and neat around the rest of the white, but just catch his nose with some Rhinox hide. And with that Rhinox hide applied, that's all the base colours applied to the fur on the model. So next thing I'm going to do is paint his skin. So for this, I'm coming in with some Wraith bone. And I'm just going to catch all of the areas of exposed skin with a couple of layers of wraith bone. So be nice and neat when you're around the fur, but just make sure you catch all of his skin with a couple of layers of wraith bone. So that'll be his legs here and his face. Catch all of this with some wraith bone. And with that wraith bone applied, that's all of the skin base coated. So 
So now with some screaming skull, I'm gonna come in and apply a dry brush all over the model. Being nice and light at this stage, you don't wanna overpower any of the other colors with this screaming skull. But just make sure you give a light dry brush all over with some screaming skull. This will help tie all of our colors together so let's pick out the details on that fur, really making them pop out. dry brush applied you can see it's made the detail stand out and really help tie all of those colors to the model together so now with some agrax earth shade i'm going to shade all over the model so make sure this seeps into all of the recesses really brings out that fur definition but at the same time make sure it doesn't pull too heavily in any areas if you do find it start to pull, you can wick it away with a dry brush, but just make sure you shade all of the model with some Agrax Earth Shade. Once that shade has dried, you can see it's added definition all over the model, darkened down that fur a little bit, and really brought out all of the details all over the skin and fur. So now with some Screaming Skull again, I'm gonna come in and dry brush all over the fur once again, really lightly this time. This will just pick out those fur details, brighten it back up, and still help tie that model together and make it look like one big fur coat. And with that dry brush applied, you can see it's brightened up that fur a little bit and really help tie all of the details on the model together. So all that's left to do is to pick out a couple of details. First of all, I'm coming in with Bugman's Glow. I'm gonna paint this over the gums and his tongue, being nice and neat around the other colors. Just catch those gums and his tongue with a couple of layers of Bugman's Glow. with his gums and tongue picked out. The next thing we'll pick out is his teeth, claws and eyes. So for these I'm coming in with some white scar. I'm gonna start off by picking out his teeth. It's just catching these nice and neatly with a little bit of white scar. I'm also going to pick out any claws you can see on the model. Just catching these with a small line of white scar as well. And finally, I'm going to sink a little bit of white scar into his eye sockets. Being nice and neat around the rest of the fur at this stage. Just sinking a little bit of this into his eye socket. And with those teeth, claws and eyes picked out, the next thing we're gonna do is add the pupil to the eye. And so for that, I'm coming in with some Abaddon Black. I'm just gonna add a thin vertical line in the middle of that white scar. 
as it's relaxed like a pupil. With those eyes picked out, it's really added the focal point to the face of the model. And now with some Agrax Earth Shade, I'm going to shade his teeth, gums, tongue and claws. Just catch all of these with a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade. And once that shade has dried, there's just one final step left to apply to the model. And that'll be with some white scar again. I'm just coming in, applying a thin line on the teeth, just at the very bottom of each of the teeth to make them appear sharp and bring them back up to color. And with that final bit of white scar applied, that is how to paint a light wolf for your games of Warhammer 40,000. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video useful. These are two quick and easy ways to paint fur on your models. So please let me know in the comments down below what other kind of animals would you like to see me paint? But thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and happy painting.